Welcome back everyone. In this section we're going to talk about exponential relationships. So in the last few sections we talked about linear growth and linear relationships, but you know from the previous sections that that's not the only type of relationship between variables. Exponential growth occurs whenever you have a number that's repeatedly multiplied by the same value. This occurs in all sorts of different real-life situations, population growth, bank investments, spreads of disease. So in this section, we're going to discuss these exponential relationships and just talk about how they're slightly different from linear models. So assume that you invest $10,000 in a bank account and you just leave it alone for 40 years. Based on what you have here, by the end of 40 years, you would have almost $160,000. This is because bank accounts accrue interest and accrue money exponentially. Notice that the exponential growth generates a curve in the line rather than the straight line that we saw with linear growth. So if we take the total from each year and divide it by the year before, so $10,700 divided by 10,000, you'll find this value is equal to 1.07. If we then do the next two years, we'll again find that same value. And so what you see is that each time, each year, the total is being multiplied by 1.07. And so, if we multiply by 1.07, we'll get the next line, and so on. So we're multiplying by 1.07 each time. So this is exponential growth. Remember, we can determine the relative change of two numbers just using the formula that's provided here. So let's look at the previous examples and find the relative change of those variables. So the first two was 10,700 minus 10,000, and then we're going to divide by the original value, which was 10,000, and that will give us 700 divided by 10,000, or 0 0.07. If we then do the next two, 11,449 minus 10,700, divided by 10,700, We're going to wind up dividing by 10,700, 11,449 minus 10,700 gives us 749. And 749 divided by 10,700, 0 0.07. So the relative change each year is 0 0.07. In terms of a bank account, this is what's known as the interest rate. In terms of an exponential relationship, this would just be known as the exponential growth rate. So from the results, we know that the first year you just have $10,000. The second year you have $10,000 times 1.07. For year two, it's $10,000 times 1.07 times 1.07, and so on. And so if we continue this process, we can write the, the amount any year using this equation, where the amount is equal to $10,000, the initial amount that we invested, and then 1.07 is the number that we're going to multiply times, and x represents the year. So for every year, we're going to multiply by another 1.07. One of the main differences between a linear relationship and an exponential relationship is now the independent variable x is an exponent. So let's use this equation to determine the amount of money we would have after 25 years. You're going to need a calculator for this. The amount at a later time is going to be $10,000 times 1.07 to the 25th power. When you plug this into your calculator, you should get $54,274.33. So because this is a bank investment, we can determine the amount of money that we earn over a certain amount of time. So if we want to find the interest earned in the first five years, well, that's just the total in the fifth year minus the total in the first year, or the initial total. So the total in year five, $14,025.52. The initial amount was $10,000. So the amount of money earned in those first five years, $4,000. and a little bit more. Now to find the interest earned in the last five years, we probably have to calculate this. For year 35 and for year 40, 
So this is 10,000, 1.07 to the 35th power, and 10,000 times 1.07 to the 40th power. And then we're just going to subtract the two. $106,000 after 35 years, after 40 years, 149,744.58. And so the interest we earned in the last five years is the difference between these two numbers. So we just subtract 149,744.58 minus 106,765. 0.82, and the interest earned in the last five years, $42,978.76. In a situation with linear growth, we would expect that the interest earned in the first five years would be the same as the last five years. But because this is exponential growth, the first five years, much, much less is earned. As the number gets larger and larger, and you continue to multiply each time, it gets bigger and bigger, faster and faster. And that's why you get a curve in the data. So for the last five years, you make much more money than you did in the first five years. So Elaine keeps an investment whose value X years after opening the account is given by that equation. What's her initial investment? And by what percentage does it grow each year? So what's the interest rate? Her initial investment is just going to be the value that she starts with. So the initial amount is just $12,500. If we want to determine the percentage that it grows each year, so the relative change, well, we can use the initial value and we can use the value for one year later. So this is year zero. For year one, 12,500 times 1.05 to the first power will give us 13,125. To find the relative change, it would be 13,125 minus 12,500 divided by the original amount, which is 12,500. 625 over 12,500, or 0 0.05. And so the interest rate is 5%, and that's how much it's going to grow each year. So what if we invest $500 in an account with a 4% interest rate? How can we write an equation to find the future value and how much money will we have in 25 years? Well, to do that, the future amount is going to be equal to the initial amount, 500, times some number raised to the x power, where x represents the number of years. In the first problem, our interest rate was 7% and we multiplied by 1.07. In the second problem, it was 5% and we multiplied by 1.05. With a 4% interest rate, we're going to multiply by 1.04 each time. And so how much money would we have in 25 years? Well, that's A, 500 times 1.04 to the 25th power. And if you plug this into your calculator, you find that after 25 years, $1,332.96. Just like linear relationships can be positive or negative, whether the line is going up from left to right or down from left to right, exponential growth can also essentially be negative, but we just call this exponential decay. Instead of the number going up each time, the number goes down each time. You're essentially dividing by the same number instead of multiplying. Multiplication and division are the same thing. So dividing is essentially just multiplying by a decimal that's between 0 and 1, something less than 1. For example, dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 0.5. So here the data that we have shows the caffeine in your system after your morning coffee, based on the number of hours. And so let's practice a little bit with how exponential decay works. Let's find the relative change in the level of caffeine for the first few hours. So 144 is hour 1 minus the initial amount is 180, divided by the original amount is 180. We get minus 0 0.2. If we do the next one, 115.2 minus 144, over 144, negative 28.8, divided by 144, minus 0 0.2. 
So exponential decay in the relative change works just a little bit differently. Each time this value is going down by 20%, which means we have 80% of the previous value, which means if we take 1.8 or 180 and multiply by 0 0.8, we should get 144. And then if we multiply 144 times 0 0.8, we should get 115.2. If we multiply that times 0 0.8, we get 92.16 or 92.2. So the relative change tells us how the percentage goes down, but the number we want to multiply by is essentially 1 minus this number, or the percentage that's left over. If we're left with 80% each time, then we would multiply by 0.8. So the number we would multiply to find the next one would be 0 0.8. If we want to write an equation that gives us the level of caffeine, well, the level of caffeine is going to be equal to, we started off with 180 milligrams, and then we're going to multiply by 0 0.8 for each hour afterwards. And so to find out how much that of the caffeine would be left after 10 hours, that's 180, 0 0.8 to the 10th power. If we plug this into our calculator, 19.33 milligrams of caffeine remaining after 10 hours. So radioactive elements are good examples of objects that exponentially decay. Iodine-123 has a particular isotope that decays in such a way that 95% of the initial sample remains after one hour periods. If you start off with 200 milligrams, how much do you have after X hours? So if we're told that 95% remains, then that means we're going to multiply by 0.95 at each step. The initial amount is 200 milligrams. And then it is going to decay to 95% of the initial sample for every hour, X, afterwards. So how much remains after 8 hours? That's 200.95 to the 8th power. 132.68 milligrams. How much of the sample remains after one week? Well, one week is seven days times 24 hours, or 168 hours. The future amount at that point, 200 times 0 0.95 to the 168 power, 0 0.0362 milligrams. Please let me know if you have any questions.